Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Indium podcast. Indium Software is a digital engineering company based out of Cupertino, California. And I'm your host, Mahesh Belli, Vice President Marketing. And we have with us Mr. Satish Pala, Chief Technology Officer of Indium Software. Satish, glad to have you here. Thanks, Mahesh, for having me for the podcast. Today, we will be talking about the latest developments in cloud data platforms, specifically Databricks. Satish, Databricks has received widespread attention in recent years and has been making waves in the market with its Lakehouse architecture. Help us understand, why is that a big deal? Sure, Mahesh. So we've had a transition of sorts from uh, basic databases to data warehouses, to data lakes, to lake houses, right? So in my view, um, each of these have a reason for existence and these are not really a sequential sort of steps towards holy grail in this data platform. Um, but before I talk about Lakehouse, I'll let, just give a recap of what we do with data warehouses and data leaks. Data warehouses were great, are great for structured data, and uh, they have supported business intelligence needs. Most enterprises uh, have a need for handling unstructured data and big data, and this is where data lakes came into the picture. So data lakes have some gaps. For example, they can't support transactions, they don't enforce data quality, and not so great handling of data through batch and streaming. And uh, this is where Lakehouse architecture excels. So it, uh, it came up recently, so it's an open architecture that combines the best elements of both data lakes and data warehouses. Uh, so of course it will solve some of the uh, uh, gaps that, or the addresses the gaps that uh, we have noted. For example, transaction support, BI support, uh, schema enforcement, governance, uh, decoupling storage and compute, uh, having APIs layer and supporting variety of data types and load workloads. And uh, as a result of which Lakehouse is uh, making waves in the market. So what I'm hearing is that architecture brings in a lot of flexibility, but is it not true that flexibility and governance were always at lock-ons? So how does Databricks bring data science and data governance together? That is true. Uh, when you have a platform that is flexible, uh, one of the things that goes uh, south is data governance. And uh, I think that's where data bricks brings together uh, data uh, science, data governance. For example, um, most of the uh, most of the audience know that data governance is nothing but a combination of policies, practices, and tools implemented together to uh, securely manage the data assets within the org. Um, some of the objectives it tries to um, meet are like having a unique data catalog to store the data, ML models, analytical artifacts, uh, of course, along with metadata. Uh, it also helps to have data access controls, helps data auditing, uh, helps with data quality management, can support data lineage and tracking. It also helps data scientists to easily discover data elements and uh, reference relevant data and uh, uh, help the business accelerate time to value. And uh, this is now addressed by Databricks by features like Unity Catalog and Delta Sharing. And uh, as a result of which, we get a centralized governance for data and AI through Databricks. Following up on that question about the latest developments in data architectures, the two names that come to, comes to my mind are Data Fabric and Data Mesh. How does Databricks address the needs of these two new gen architectures? So a data mesh uh, architecture also has come up recently is uh, basically a decentralized approach, right? That enables specific domain teams to perform cross-domain data analysis on their own. So the domain team um, ingests operational data, builds analytical data models to perform their own analysis. It then uses these analytical data sets to provide data products uh, based on their needs. Now, how Databricks helps is this, is that uh, Databricks Lakehouse architecture uh, helps these organizations drive their data mesh journey by enabling a decentralized approach by storing and processing data. The so storing is, is uh, decoupled with processing, uh, processing or compute while, cent while centralizing security, governance, and data discovery. The moment we say framework, there is no one way to solve the problem, isn't it? and each vendor's approach is going to be different. So here's my next question. From a customer's point of view, how will they choose between different cloud platforms, say between Snowflake and Databricks? Or the other way of asking the question is, for what use cases will they choose Databricks? I thought you will sneak this in question, Mahesh. It's a very complex question to answer, but 
let me give a background so there is no yes or no for this but let me give you a background both databricks and snowflake are as we know cloud based data platforms and clearly leaders in this uh, modern data management area they have uh, they, have, they while they have similarities they also have major differences and they specifically excel in their core areas so that's why i keep saying a true comparison is not possible uh so may, maybe give i'll give more details on this so snowflake, snowflake is a cloud data warehouse for structured and semi structured data databricks is also cloud based but it is based on apache spark and uh, it is uh, it is built around apache spark's distributing computing distributed computing framework to of course make management of infrastructure easier uh databricks is a platform with better capabilities than snowflake for specific areas like elt data science and machine learning it doesn't mean snowflake is uh, is not so good right so users in databricks users store data and manage object store which could be any cloud and it doesn't get involved in the pricing of the storage it specifically focuses on data lake and data processing and uh, it is mostly aimed at data scientists and um, of course data analysts so uh, by i leave this by saying that both excel in their core areas however for a combination or an end to end data platform for data scientists and data engineers uh, probably databricks is a better solution absolutely the best fit is what matters recently there was a comment by the gartner vp analyst mr rontal during the data and analytics summit he mentioned we are moving in the direction where the data lake house becomes a best practice but everyone is moving at a different speed my question is if databricks is promising ease of use and faster time to market why is this different speed coming to picture are we missing something here so this is a question i often get to hear from our prospects right so while most enterprises are well aware of the benefits of switching to databricks it's definitely not an easy switch it's not straight forward either you know there are some clear use cases like migration of hadoop to databricks unified data analytics platform and maybe building a new databricks uh, unified data analytics platform that are probably straight forward and easier to do however most businesses are in multiple levels of maturity in data analytics and ai so each one of them needs to assess what level of databricks adoption is required uh, for example is it just migration of workloads to databricks or just data science or maybe a data platform migration so because of this uncertainty it is not very straight forward and easy and that's why it is slow however promise so clearly there's a lot of complexity involved so as one of the key databricks implementation service providers how does indium help these clients who are in these various stages of maturity yeah so uh, databricks implementation can be done uh, based basically from a small pilot use case whether it's a, a data science use case or a data engineering use case to an end to end data platform build out right so uh, there are multiple uh, levels of implementation there are multiple models for implementation using databricks at indium we follow a four stage process uh, first one is assessment followed by a pilot then implement and scale and followed by um, maintenance and support however uh, these are not like a sequential s- uh, steps of uh, processing or new implementation of databricks you uh, most companies are in one one stage or the other so at indium uh, we can come in at any stage and help our customers on their end to end database life cycle satish we have uh, come across clients who are quite mature in databricks adoption but are also constantly trying to improve the roi isn't it so in this regard how does the recently announced ibrix solution from indium fit in is it just about roi or other other aspects to it as well so this is a, this is something i'm very proud of uh, mahesh so ibrix is a very home grown framework based on databricks so right at, at indium we have taken databricks capability to the next level uh, as an end to end data and ai platform with this ibrix solution so just to give more details right ibrix is a packaged combination of ai ml use cases we have built custom scripts we have built new usable libraries we have deployed Uh, these libraries we have built processes policies optimization techniques we also uh, have a package of uh, best practices performance management uh, thought processes uh, including various levels of automation standard operational procedures best uh, including uh, cost optimization techniques so we are bringing uh, databricks to next level using all of these features through our ibrix solution framework 
And uh, as a result, Databricks uh, analytics platform coupled with Indium's iBricks can definitely make the businesses uh, uh, take the Databricks adoption uh, faster, easier. It makes them agile, of course, high performance, and also uh, uh, also take up the um, most complex and uh, I would say time-consuming business insights projects and make it make it uh, faster while saving costs. That sounds brilliant, Satish. With so much of movement happening in the space, how is Indium Software keeping up with the change and the demand at the same time? So, firstly, any capability incubation is a very challenging thing if it's very new, right? So, we will need to do a market analysis, figure out the skill sets required, what is the foundational um, base skills required, or, or do we have the right amount of people within the company, outside the company? Um, so, that that's how we do the initial incubation analysis. However, for Databricks, it's a different ball game because uh, th- there were few elements within our company that helped us drive this. So we have taken major strides in building our Databricks capability. For example, we have cross-skilled over 100 data engineers and data scientists on Databricks over the last 12 months. Uh, we've also taken advantage of our Spark capability, which we have been housing from within for almost uh, six to seven years. And it definitely made it easier to build out uh, database capability on top. Uh, we discussed before, right? So we have built uh, iBricks on top of Databricks, which has also helped uh, in, uh, give us the additional value on top of, top of Databricks capability. One of the things that helped us is that our expertise in implementing a variety of analytical and AI use cases uh, is attracting talent from the market. So some of, most of the people from the market are looking at uh, our experience in, those, in this area and uh, we are able to easily hire such uh, talent and we can cross kill them with the Databricks as well as Databricks. Now coming to the best part of the podcast, can you give us a good story from one of the recent Databricks implementations and how did it make a difference to the clients? Yeah, so there are multiple situations or use cases that we have deployed for customers, but I will I'll take up one specific client where we had uh, uh, built a data mesh uh, with Databricks platform. So you spoke about data mesh. I thought it would be appropriate to bring up that client and the use case uh, re- relevant to Databricks, right? So this client of ours operates an ex- extensive supply chain network of consumer goods globally. And uh, they've had challenges uh, specifically not having uh, independent insights for each data source. They've had data sources and some consolidated data platform, but they were having challenges of not able to dig deep into the source-based insights. And uh, they also had challenges like having redundant copies of data, processing of terabytes of data was uh, was becoming a challenge with uh, um, not so good speed. Uh, so we had addressed these challenges uh, with the Databricks data mesh solution on Azure Cloud. Uh, we had deployed an Azure Databricks serverless we had deployed an enterprise data platform. We also decentralized the data ownership model. So as a result of which, what has happened is that they were able to, uh, of course, run the data processing at a quicker time, a quicker speed. They are all, they were also having challenges in insights, right? So that has been resolved because we have had uh, uh, a decent uh, data platform for to for them to consume from the presentation layer on the dashboard side. Um, some of the benefits that they have noticed is that uh, while they were waiting uh, for the data processing to complete and uh, they were having two or three days to wait, uh, because of our solution, uh, the data processing speed kind of increased 25 times, which was amazing right. for the amount of time uh, they have saved. And uh, over the last, uh, I think, 18 months, they have also realized uh, 30% reduction in TCO. So uh, this is an amazing use case where we were able to deploy uh, Databricks uh, data mesh solution on top of Azure Cloud. Right? So uh, very proud of this solution. And uh, we've also built uh, reusable components libraries because of this. And this is going to definitely improve the efficiencies in our uh, next stage of projects. Thank you so much for your time, Satish. As always, it's been a great experience learning from you, and I'm sure our listeners will feel the same as well. Thank you again. Thanks, Mahesh. I'm uh, very happy to be a part of this discussion.